Yeah, it's not brilliant, but it's not your fault. It's still awkward. Oh yeah, we could probably do a pushing the table back in that case. We could probably do a putting the table back where it was in that case. It's just a bit crap getting the other councillors, isn't it? Yeah, you get back in the head, so this side. Oh yeah, you're all right. Yeah, good, thanks. Save the cemetery. I don't know yet. There you go. Not picking up a council Wi-Fi, it's not your Wi-Fi. Okay. Right.
Uh, there is a protocol uh, that this council has in place for council meeting. Uh, I'll ask both uh, gentlemen that are doing the recording to move the safer part of the room from where the most welcome to record the meeting. Uh, if any member of the public doesn't wish to be recorded, would you please indicate um, to me that I can then reiterate that to the gentlemen that are doing the recording and I'll ask them not to record. Councillors don't have that privilege. Um, anybody, any member of the public can record the meeting as they so choose to wish. Okay? If I just go through the speakers and then I'm just going to read you the agenda taking into account the uh, people that have turned up this evening. Uh, in terms of the Lodge of Walton Main South, we have Stephen Moore, thank you. This is Barbara Moore, Jim Fitzpatrick, thank you, Andrew Pobard, thank you. And then on the item of lectures, we'll go on as Milton Roberts. Thank you. Um, after we've done the minutes, I intend to change the agenda, but I'll take the lectures or item first. Um, and then take the Walton Lane item second and then revert back to the normal agenda. That's okay, my colleagues. Yeah, thank you. Item two is public question time. And this is for a maximum of 15 minutes. Any members of the public who wish to ask a question to me uh, as chairman of this committee on any item which is not on the agenda. <coughs> I'd just like to ask a quick question, please, if that's possible. Of you may, sir. Uh, I noticed last time from the uh, Nelson Area Committee that. Um, People that actually voted, you know, you took votes, and they, they weren't actually listed. The vote wasn't there in the minutes. Can we have it this time? Who voted what? Uh, the, the only. Uh, we can't, right? Uh, okay. We don't record uh, uh, votes and individual votes at every committee meeting. Okay. Okay. Is there a reason for that? Just because the council constitution. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I can read the minutes of the last meeting held uh, in November last year. Move them. Okay, I'm going to move to item 14B, uh, which is the Lenters Road item. Um, the one that Lenters Road has some very recommended <coughs> But before we debate this, can I invite Mr. Roberts? Mm -hmm. Mr. Roberts, you've got up to a maximum of five minutes. Thank you very much. Which address the committee? Once you've addressed the committee, uh, you can't then come back unless you have a specific question. That's fine. Right. Well, George. Do you mind if I just give out some of these points? Yeah, sure. We've got a bit of reference for what's been going on. Okay. Yeah, I'll just read this out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Chairman and fellow committee members, thank you for giving me this opportunity to present information in relation to two sites my family and I proposed to develop. The larger plot on the, that you have on your plan, I'd just like you to give to me a historical reference. It is the former site of a terrace of 14 houses, which was demolished <coughs> by others in 1975. So I'm assuming it's, that is a brown hill side. The smaller plot, I think we'll have had historically some planning in place because the construction of the gable end of number 45, which is the top house, suggests <coughs> that the intention was to continue the development up to the junction with what was Beale Street. Several plots within half a mile radius and are, are identified for potential development. Now, I have to be careful how I word this, by whom I don't know, because they all fall within the Pendlebury Council's local plan part two. And I, I personally can't establish from reading that whether they've just been submitted by uh, landowners wanting to throw the hat into the ring or it's Pendle Council. Now then, there is one site further down the road, and it's coloured in green on site reference, P093, which is currently offered for sale, and that is also the site of what was Greenwood and Hartley Terrace, two former rows of terrace houses. It's currently on, on the market for sale by Pendlebury Council, with outline planning, 
for six semi-detached properties. Uh, and there are others which are in the plan that have also actually been finished, i.e. the Knott's Lane Brick Works. Uh, I think that more or less concludes what I have to say, rather than... Uh, I'm, I remember the demolition of all these houses in 1975. I was there. And after all the storm and the slate had all been palletised and taken to pastures new, the company that demolished the houses, J.C. Lund from Otlet, were left with vast piles of rubble that had no commercial value. Some was taken away, but some was trampled into the ground repeatedly by machinery. So, to me, this might not be relevant to this committee, but I just want to point it out. It seems a contradiction that the covenants that are imposed, that the land be used for grazing only, it can't be used for grazing because it's constantly waterlogged. I personally tried to graze sheep on there and it turns into a bog land within three or four days. Uh, that concludes what I have to say. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Well, I think that we should uh, agree with the recommendation of the Common uh, and District Committee. Um, that is um, uh, that we decline uh, the request for the removal of the various uh, restricted and property covenants. And uh, I'm grateful for Mr. Roberts for uh, explaining uh, some of the background to. Uh, the, the issue, but uh, I, I think the, the justification for uh, putting the covenants on in the first place was uh, to retain the relatively open nature uh, of that um, periphery, the perimeter of Tom, and to keep it uh, in a, 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 an acceptable uh, condition for the few residents who, who did it, do live up there. I think given that the area committee uh, has resolved that um, we shouldn't take the covenants away, um, I would rather that we follow those. Clearly, it's not the end of the road uh, for Mr Roberts, uh, because uh, he would have the right to go to the land tribunal and seek to have the covenant set aside and um, uh, in fact an independent uh, tribunal that will look at it if they don't think it's reasonable for the covenant to be uh, retained then um, they will decide otherwise but I think we need to keep faith with our local council um, who have come out quite strongly in favour of retaining the other minister so I would note that we concur with the resolution of the Parliament of Chicken and the Department of Chicken. Yes. 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 Condition in place, and that we should leave that piece of land still having a use. What we set it out for all these buildings years ago.
five minutes for uh, all four of you, yeah. but I'll try and be uh, liberal with the five minutes, which I feel that there's a repetition of the same point. I'm the outside person to that board. So this is more the four doors first. <coughs> I wish you'd speak about Nelson the Coming to Town, a little bit of picture. In February 1892, Alderman Hartley and Councillor Hudson negotiated the new Sir William Walton purchase of 13 acres of land on that date form for £2,000 with the purpose of creating a venture. In August 1892, the council approved a loan of £10,000, £2,000 for the purchase of land, 8,000 for the building of the chapel and the laying out of the cemetery. Please note there is no cemetery house at this date. At today's rate, that cost would be £1,300,000. In October 1892, Reverend Coleman was appointed to consecrate the cemetery and mitigate the price for the building work. So, in 1894, and with great pride, the cemetery was opened by Mayor William Hartley. Now, Councillors, compare that careful planning and building this day. It wasn't done on the tree or in a hurry. With little thought for the future, no. This was all well planned and built with great care, using the best materials for the people that live and work for, and are here. The lodge was built shortly afterwards in 1890 within the grounds of the cemetery. The architect was Mr. Wardtown and designed other iconic buildings in the area, including the Grange, the Corn and Corn Town Hall. These buildings are very still, are still very much used today, and I was a little wonder that these are the buildings and given the heritage that they represent. Now, sadly, the last time the lodge passed away last year, but the council had the responsibility to provide to preserve our heritage now and for the future. Thank you. Mr. Hall. Thank you. Don't mind the door standing up the ankles. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Back in December last year <coughs> at the back meeting, the recommendation for the Liber Arthur report to renovate Nelson Cemetery was ignored. Was it because some councillors thought there was no interest in the house? simply because it was in the grounds of the cemetery and who would want to live in the cemetery. I can report to that there's plenty of interest. Firstly, 1,400 people signed an online petition to keep the house. Not only residents of Marsden, but all over Pendle and well beyond. There have been inquiries to buy the house or rent it. Our own MP, Mr Andrew Stevenson, has expressed his support to keep it alive. Secondly, regarding the quarter of 85,000 to renovate the house, this includes building a new driveway and car space directly from Walton Lane. This would mean altering the walls and railings which form part of the list of buildings. <coughs> Therefore, this would require permission and cause great delay. It would save money to use the existing main driveway in the cemetery and use the path to the house to make a carport and that's what the last resident did. Thank you very much. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Sorry, no, I apologise. That's all right. No worries. Good job, Mike. Good In my thoughts, the Council should follow the Environmental Services recommendation and renovate the lodge and keep our heritage, not demolish it. Safeguards, however, must be put in place by a planning to prevent persons or companies allowing the lodge to fall into a state of disrepair, as has happened with other iconic buildings in our area, to exploit the land value for later day. Also, in that same report, item number six, it is expressly stated from the planning department that this cannot be demolished. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, I just want to reiterate what Steve said about the um, renting it out. And if you looked at, say, if you spent around about £75,000 on the renovations, and say you let it about £750 a month, which I think is mentioned in the Nelson Area Committee report um, minutes, it, the yield is an healthy 12%. So PBC could take, possibly take out a loan for 3 or 4% for 
from the public loan board, <laughs> the lodge house is then both viable and sustaining long-term asset. Um, just the other thing, the campaign um, attracted interested parties to purchase the lodge. Um, we had lots of emails from different people, not some serious, not so serious. Um, but I've been personally contacted by an interested buyer who has already met, emailed the PBC, but he's had no reply from them. So I don't know if he's gone to the wrong email or a generic one, I don't know what's happened there. But I do have his details with me tonight, and he's asked me to pass them on to you, in confidence to the committee, so you, you know your perusal or action. Um, he's not back in the country till the 20th, well, probably the 21st is a better time, and uh, he's very keen to find the top of it, so. That's it, thank you. Well, I thank all four speakers. Uh, is there any member, any councillors, people that are not on the committee that want to speak to the rest of the can I just end these? Sorry, Tristan, can I end these details of the uh, uh, shopping around here? My history teacher, Mr. Dennett, was always fond of quotes before a lesson started, and I, rem and I remember one such quote. Learn from the past, prepare for the future, live for the present. Please bear this in mind. He frequently told us history we studied is not actually what happened, but what got recorded through words, pictures and structures. All buildings in Pendleton are a part of the material structure, better known as cultural resources, and it's part of what surrounds us on a daily basis. Now, the world gives us natural resources, but our forefathers give us cultural resources, and these cultural resources are what we, are what we surround ourselves with and enjoy so much. But sometimes the present is in conflict with the past. I'll give you an example. The coach house to Marsden Hall was a lot bigger than it is today. And over the last and over time, it has now made way for housing development. This is a prime example of lost heritage where the present has come into conflict with the past. The lodge itself could be unattended and over time it will come to decay. But by doing this, we aren't protecting Pendle's heritage. We are only ripping out pages of Pendle's history book. Nelson over the years has lost so much of its local history and its heritage. I recognise we can't save everything, but could we not at least save a sample of Marsden's history? So the message comes back, history. What, what history? You choose, it's your history. Lose it or preserve it. Thank you.
You see the physical person, you see the girl, you see the boys, you see the wall, you see the headmaster's hand. And all of those things come together and tell you about that building. So to lose the, the lodge house, to me, would be to take out one of the front from that collection within that cemetery. It would be really obvious. The things sit together as a group. And I, I was expecting to read an officer's report that said this was a possibility because I was alerted to this potential threat by Hansen McGowan. And I read an officer's report that clearly says <coughs> the building shouldn't be demolished. That's not even considered. It's just should the building be restored by Pendle Council or should the building be sold to a potential purchaser. So that's what the officer's report very clearly says. There's no other, other option. Um, put in front of us. So I'm very surprised to, to read this. I, I feel that the council has a responsibility to care for heritage. <coughs> Coney Town Hall is a case in point. It's an annoyingly old, grand, stone parapeted, iron, <coughs> iron gutted, magnificent building. Coney would be the worst for not having it in its skyline, in its landscape. It would make sense for Mr. Langton to knock down this town hall, knock down the home town hall, and possibly, <coughs> to a more shown industrial estate, put us all in a big iron unit, keep costs low. That would be the way ahead from an entirely pragmatic perspective. But we can't turn our backs on the past, can we? The forefathers of Nelson, who put the sewage works front and centre in the, in the mayoral regalia, they were proud of their engineering, they were proud of their structures. And I'm afraid you, we are the inheritors of that. So we might like to go and be in a modern unit and keep the costs down on the Lemon Shane industrial estate, but we are less with these rich buildings. And the downside for people who have to pay bills is we must preserve them because we are the people who are trusted to look after them. So I would say that the council should keep its whole um, cemetery estate together, the walls, the railing, which do need repairing, but they're still there, they weren't taken away by the wall, and this beautiful building with its very proud chimney, its wonderful, wonderful um, window opening. That is a, that is a landmark building. That's not just a house for a person that lives in the cemetery. It's saying something. It's saying something for Nelson Park. Yeah, yeah. So we, as a council, have to accept that we might not want these things, we might wish that we don't have to look at them, but we have to, we have to care for them. So as a minimum, we should give it to somebody, or sell it to somebody, who will care for it, but I would like the council to keep it all together, and I believe that it could be done sustainably, it would give an income of £750 a month, according to this report, and with strong project management, that could be made to be cost neutral. And it's not quite cost neutral, Thank you, Joe. Um, I'm not going to major on the, the demolition um, item because I, I think that, uh, frankly, I think that's the most ridiculous thing I've heard for an awful long time. Um, I did do a calculation um, which um, based on the area of adjacent cemetery, just to look at the calculation, if you were to demolish and take the area for um, additional graves, I think you would probably get yourself about 100 graves if you took out all the trees as well. Uh, given that it's a listed um, church the building is listed, would need listed building to some demolish it. The railings and the gates are a separate listing to the um, 